shrine lies in ruins. The service is abandoned, and one more cloud service doesn't make it out of 2022 alive. Don't expect a graceful death like Stadia, who, as an established player with a reputation to protect, closed with a large press announcement and refunds. Shrine instead dies in shame, going out by stopping all communication with customers and allowing their web services to expire. Shrine was an early riser in the age of small AWS startups. Companies like Amazon have great hardware all over the world that they're willing to rent off in massive chunks. Renting those chunks and having a system to conveniently get that hardware to gamers and charging them a reasonable fee for their time could be profitable. If Shrine can pull it off, I imagine we'd see many more AWS-based cloud services that would try to turn a profit selling smaller pieces of a big rental to cloud gamers looking to play some games. Obviously, it didn't work out for them. We've been keeping an eye on Shrine since it soft launched in February of 2022. Shrine used Amazon Web Services to provide gaming machines for its users, and they have no hardware of their own. What Shrine did have was an app. This app was how Shrine allocated the hardware they rented to their users. In addition to allocating hardware, the app was also able to directly interface with their Shrine Cloud PCs. This app also had some controversy, but we'll get into that later. Mouse sensitivity in the app was a bit high for us, so we, like many other Shrine users, would use their app to start the service, but then would switch to Parsec as our app of choice to connect. Once Parsec was loaded up, the games worked very well with no control issues. Eventually, Shrine even promoted this practice inside of their own app. Shrine couldn't turn a big enough profit from the start. We don't have access to their books, but we can make some educated guesses. Initially, Shrine opened as a monthly sub with play caps, meaning you bought the service for a month and you were limited to how many hours you could play. If you exceeded that allotted playtime, your month immediately ended and you'd have to buy another month to refresh it. Another way to explain this would be that you bought a machine in 20, 40, or 60 hour chunks and you had one month to use it before it expired and you were forced to buy those chunks again to get back on. By calling it a subscription, they could justifiably get you to pay month to month rather than you buying credit and spending it as you need it, such as similar services do, like Air GPU or Maximum Settings. The pricing was pretty reasonable at the time on a strictly hourly basis. We go into that in our Getting Started videos. Perhaps a bit too good for sub-renting hardware from Amazon. If Shrine was counting on the Planet Fitness business model, meaning people pay for a month of gym time, but then they target people who aren't likely to show up to the gym, well, that doesn't work on gamers. We're talking about a community of people who routinely crunch numbers for maximum damage just for the satisfaction of kicking digital ass in their free time. They are absolutely going to max out what they get for their real-life currency. And so Shrine changed up their business model. No longer were there play caps. Now there are queues. If you were willing to wait through a queue, you could have unlimited playtime for your monthly fee. Shrine expanded heavily after this, so it must have been working out in the first month, or they would have been placing a huge bet on the future. You aren't getting those AWS machines without paying for them after all. The problem with this system is that after the first month, many people are going to be canceling their Shrine service. Nobody wants to wait for 20, 30 minutes, or even over an hour just to get their playtime in. We need our recreation to be available on our schedule. So even if the initial start was promising, customers were bleeding out, likely to never return. A few months ago, just after we covered the massive service changes to Shrine, a whole new slew of changes came and completely changed the pricing system again. They finally branched out to beyond Amazon Web Services and looked into working with TensorDoc. There's no reason to cover all these things in detail, since the aptly named Shrine is now in ruins. But the takeaway is that until he vanished on November 20th, Neil had been continuing to tweak, adjust, and expand his cloud service. What's funny is that Shrine recently contacted us about their new affiliate program. This made us suspect that these last few weeks of service, including the introduction of the affiliate program, was a last-ditch effort not to save Shrine, but to scam people out of all the money they could and then run. We did not hear anything back from them in many weeks. People in the Discord are asking for help, People could purchase a machine but would get an error when trying to run it, and no one got their money back. The problems were plenty. Was it always a scam? Eh, probably not. They put a lot of effort into support, revamping their system to turn a profit, expansion, improving their software. You don't spend this much time on development, negotiate new deals with financial institutions, expand your service area, change your operating system infrastructure, integrate a whole new hardware provider with TensorDoc, with hundreds of support messages on Discord alone, if this is a grift from the start. We've seen companies that make unreasonable promises and set up websites for a scam, and you don't have to do this much. It's much more likely that the operation is very small, 
and either Neil simply cut his losses, or the other possibility, which is a bit more morbid, is that Neil's not doing well. I hope he's still healthy and capable. In addition to the service problems for their customers, Shrine's been accused of using open source code as the basis of their closed source app, essentially stealing the work of those who donated their code to the world, under the condition that if anyone builds upon their code, any derivative works are also free to the public. This is a claim that's very difficult to prove. Now, Neil's employment history shows that he worked for Amazon, so he may have built his app from his experiences there. One of the most outspoken community members against Shrine is Benji, a cloud enthusiast who maintains a public information repository of cloud services. He says he was banned from Shrine's Discord earlier this year for asking questions regarding their code sources, though Shrine claims it was for promoting attacks on their service. Whether or not Shrine is honest, the moderator of Reddit's cloudy gamer community had the right of it. I'm beginning to think this company is either a scam or so shoddily run that it's indistinguishable from one. Shrine's last real-time support response was November 19th, 2022, and the final public announcement addressing machine issues was the next day on November 20th. The final nail in the coffin was pounded in on December 25th, 2022, when the Shrine.app website no longer connected to their servers. You almost made it a full year, Shrine. Merry Christmas. What can we learn from Shrine's demise? Well, Amazon Web Services is powerful, but reselling the service didn't create enough profit for Shrine to stay afloat. Their attempt to get creative with limited hardware pissed off their users until Neil stopped supporting the service. We know their initial model, that put play caps on a monthly subscription, was a failure. We also know that long queues were universally hated and drove users away after their first month. As a cloud gamer looking for a service, you can always take a chance on a new service like Shrine. But if you can't afford to lose your sub fee and you want something you can count on, consider going with a service that owns their own hardware like Maximum Settings. Because they own their hardware, they'll lose out a lot more if they're no longer invested in their service. Because Shrine was renting their stuff from AWS, it was much more easy for them to just cut their ties and run with minimal losses. Alternatively, services that have been around for a long time, like Shadow, are less likely to randomly call it quits without giving you a warning. Lastly, Subscribe to keep it tuned right here to Cloud Gaming Battle, where you can stay up to date on all the latest cloud gaming news and gameplay, including reviews on cloud services. Don't forget to like or comment if you can, it really helps us out. If you want to go the extra distance, support us via channel membership or Patreon. I'm a little quick, and contrary to how it sounded here, I wanted trying to succeed. More cloud gaming means more options and more competition, and that's better for all of us.